Hi there, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today is basically a part two of my previous video on modernizing the Microsoft Access interface. Now, in part one, we basically just looked at taking a raw HTML, CSS, JavaScript, whatever menu, and bringing it into Access. I just, it was very straightforward, okay? And today I wanted to just push things a little bit further, show you some of the opportunities you might have, some ideas you may have for enhancing it. Now I'm not giving you something that's 100% done. I'm just doing demonstrations, illustrations of how you'd go about it. Um, I'll see about updating some of my demos to try to provide you more, you know, 100% baked solutions. But I just wanted to get out there because I know some of you are, are looking into this right off the bat and you may be saying to yourselves it's missing certain capabilities and I just want to show you that the capabilities can easily be added, okay? So don't think that just because this is what it is that that's where it ends because it doesn't have to, okay? The capabilities are there once we get this into access, which we did in the previous video. Everything else is just adding bells and whistles and icing on the cake, okay? It really isn't that hard to move things further along. So let's just look at this demo here. So I just wanted to demonstrate, and let's come here and let's take a look here, uh, design view. Uh, and we can come and we can look at, uh, sorry, wrong event, the document complete. And you're gonna see here now, what have I done? Well, well, let's, let's comment it out for two seconds. Let's just look at what happens when I comment out this line. Let's load our menu. As you see what I've done, if you remember, this guy had this full menu here, right? So what I'm doing now is I'm loading basically the framework. So the JavaScript, the, the, the CSS, everything is loaded, okay? Bare bones, but there's no items. There are no items loaded. And you can look at it here, you'll see in the body, we have the nav container, but there are no actual list items included. So it's a blank canvas, a blank menu right now. Now let me demonstrate to you what that line does. So let's uncomment it, let's save it. So what I've chosen to do to push things further along is dynamically populate the menu. You'll notice here that the settings, settings, is gone. So this is to demonstrate to you that we can, if we want, add security and control who has access to what. So what I've done here is I've said for that section, the settings section, the whole submenu, everything contained in it, I said it's limited to George, the get username George. My name isn't George on this machine, so I will never see that menu. Now, I'm using the get username. You could use this at security group level, so it has to be an administrator. It can be whatever you want. It only works on a certain PC. You can lock this down however you want, but I just wanted to demonstrate very simply a simple if statement and you can control who has access to which menus. So I've done a whole sub menu. You could apply it to an individual item, just one list item. It doesn't have to be the whole sub menu. You can hide, choose what you hide at your leisure. Okay. Originally, you know, you think, oh, I can just enable disable. The problem with that, okay, is that because we now have access to the inspection tool, a malicious user could come in here through the console and re-enable menus that you've disabled. So I much prefer don't even give them that option and just don't render it. Don't include it in the navigation whatsoever. So just to demonstrate that I'm not lying, let's switch this over to Daniel. Sure, we'll save that. We'll reload it. And now the settings is in fact there for me to use. Okay. So that's the first example. Another thing we could possibly do, let's close this guy out, come here. 
is we could move things along. And now what we're doing is we're going to take our items from a table. Now I'm going to just stop here for one second and just mention one thing. Does this truly advance the cause? I know we like to be data driven. We're database people. I'll just say in all my years, I've done tons and tons of menus, um, dynamic menus, where even the users or at least the administrators can go in and alter the items in tables just like this. And I will tell you in all my years, I have never had a single time, not one, where a client has done it. Okay. So is there a lot of value in doing this? It's questionable. But I just wanted to demonstrate for those of you that are, you know, hardcore, I want it to be database driven. It can be done. So we come here, we launch it up. I'm just going to demonstrate to you. You'll have to excuse me. I hadn't implemented my own fix to the uh, bug with dynamic loading. So I just put it in place and now it will work properly. So just to demonstrate here, profile settings, you know, let's just to show that it is dynamically controlled through the table, I'm going to move the log up above messages. So we'll just come here. We'll look at where our messages. Oh, messages is five. I'm going to now make this six. I'm going to make five, uh, six, sorry, number five. So now the logout should be above messages. Uh, you don't like the word logout. No big deal. Exit access. And now you have exit access. And you can do all of these things. You can change the classes that are all here. Um, I don't know all of the classes, but let's go find just for fun, just to demonstrate to you how easy this is. Awesome icons. So you can come and take a look. Uh, and actually before going on any further, I should open this. Because out of memory, I do not remember which version of Font Awesome this is running. If we look in the head very quickly, you will see Font Awesome 4.7. Okay, so we need to find Font Awesome 4.7, which is right here. There's the cheat sheet that you could also use. Um, well, I prefer if we use their own version. Um, so let's find the official website. There we go. And now you can find whatever you like. So all the icons are here for you to search for, or at the top, you just search here. So we can do settings, let's say. And let's say what it, I'm going to switch it to the wrench. Okay. So we can do that. So it's FA wrench. Okay. So now I just come back here. My settings, instead of the gear, I switch it to the wrench, make sure it's saved. So now instead of this gear icon, I come here and now we should have a wrench icon. So as you can see, everything is contained in a table um, and I have an order numbering so you can switch the hierarchy. You can move items around, sub menu items around. So this column here just indicates which ones are part of sub menus. And if they have no value, it's because they're main items, not some menu items. So these are all item four sub menu items. So number four would be settings. Number four is settings. These three are part of number nine. So the ninth is the help. And in fact, when you look, you'll see that those two menus, settings and help, are menus with sub items in them. The functionality doesn't change because it's all still being controlled by that click event. But just to illustrate that it can all be driven here very simply. And I'm not going to go into all the code right now, but basically what we're doing, like I said, it's controlled here at runtime. So once that initial framework is loaded, I'm now pushing to the nav. I'm finding the nav and I'm pushing the inner HTML from my generate menu function, which is this guy here. And what it's doing is it's reading, reading my menu item table 
and it's building up all these list items and I'm also doing it a second time for sub menu. I could make this a recursive function, but because I only had two levels, this was just simple and quick and dirty to illustrate the principle. But that's it. It's just a question of reading the table and building the required HTML code. So this code works for this menu. For another menu, obviously I need to change this function up because it won't be necessarily list items with uh, links and whatnot. It will be set up differently. But the principle will always be the same. It's just a question of reading the table, building the required HTML for that menu, and then using a simple execute JavaScript to run a command, which is this guy here, that goes and gets the nav in inputs as HTML value inside it, whatever our menu generates. The rest of the code is unchanged. This is all send we're able to, you know, uh, recognize when the user clicks on an item and then react to it, which was all covered in the previous video. So if you're not, uh, if you don't understand this, any of this is foreign to you, just go look at my part one because it was all covered there. But just to illustrate once again, that all of this is very simple. Um, we could push things even further. Also, once again, you can add security in here. You could do it hard coded. We could also add another table that could indicate who has access to which uh, items, which numbered items, and then read that in runtime to decide if you generate that element or not. So you could check, is this user so-and-so? They should or shouldn't see it, so we're going to populate this or not. Or is this user part of this group? Yes or no. We're going to do this element or not. So when we're in here in the VBA, it's very easy to add these ifs and these checks and, you know, just quick checks against tables. Once again, you know, for security and users, that makes sense to have it in table. Having the menu itself, it's very debatable. Is it worth doing all of this? Does it add a lot of value to be able to come here and change the name, change the, when I can just edit the text file in two seconds, I can just come here. Because don't forget, like I said, in my experience, the menus don't change, okay? These aren't things that change often or at all, or if they are going to evolve, they're going to evolve when you're doing development work on the front end anyway. So you're already going to be there. So it really isn't hard for you then to take two seconds and say, oh, I have a new list item and just come here. And there you go. I've done my list item. Okay. My new item. There we go. I'm done. Versus uh, opening a table and making your entry here which one's better it's debatable um some people will say to me okay well there is the issue here these are text files they could be accessible to the user therefore they could alter them they could do things yeah you know malicious users exist everywhere it could be happen i'm not denying that um, so having the table could be beneficial if you take the precautions to make sure users can access the tables and that isn't always really straightforward to do it a hundred percent. So then people like me can still find ways around to access tables, even after you think you've hidden them. So just, you have to weigh the pros and cons, but just know it is definitely possible. You want to do a database driven table driven menu, go for it. It's, it's very doable and it isn't too, too hard. And you can control every aspect of it. Like I say, the text, you can control the icons, you control the, the, obviously the ID, which is linked in the code for reacting to what they click on. You can change your sub menus. All of that's easy. I'm going to take my switch user and now it's part of the help menu. Switch user. There it is. It's part of the help menu now. I want my switch user at the top. Sure. So switch user, we're going to make it a number one. Make sure it's saved. Come here. And now it's going to be a level one. Okay. So frequently asked is also a level one. We have a bit of a conflict there, but we can easily switch that to a number two if we wanted and then make sure it's saved and rerun it. And now you will see that it is literally the number one item. So yeah, there, there are advantages at that level, um, perhaps security. Ease of updating, it's questionable. 
Um, but anyway, I'm going to leave it at that for right now. There are also other precautions you can take on the directory level. Don't forget, send users can't access this, right? So there are ways of making folders accessible to your database and it can launch and run without users being able to get to it and mess around with the files. Uh, you could also hold this in a completely separate folder, not part of your database where your users aren't even aware and keep that all hidden in code. There, there's so many different layers of protection and things you can do to try to avoid malicious users. But at the end of the day, if you have a malicious user, whether it's a file, whether it's a table, if they really want to, they're going to find a way. Okay. So uh, that's why I don't concentrate too, too much on this, but yes, this is definitely possible. Now I've spent enough time on table and um, you clearly see it's possible. You want to add security, definitely possible. The depth of which you go into for the security is just like when you're developing a login form, uh, security measures for opening forms and reports and all of that. It can be very simple. It can be very complex that that is your choice and the principle for applying it to a form to a report or to a menu is basically going to always be the exact same so however you go about identifying your user your user groups um, that's going to be the exact same thing you're going to do when you're trying to apply the if here to determine if you render this or not depending on the user the user group so I'm just going to stop there. I just wanted to highlight these two little aspects just to show you once again that we can take a basic menu and we can push it further. Okay. We can add security. We can add, I guess, quote unquote, flexibility and make it database driven since it's truly a database uh, utility. I will mention here, you know, traditionally, you could even put the entire HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, if it's simple, if you don't need external libraries, you could even put that in a table and you could read it at runtime and load it into the web browser control. That being said, there's bugs. There are bugs with the modern web browser control. And there is one in particular that when you load a control dynamically, the click event doesn't work. So right now with a modern web browser it isn't really something uh, that you can do and that will work with the legacy web browser there was no issue whatsoever uh, with the modern web browser we have some problems some big problems um, i have blog posts i've already posted on the feedback portal we'll see if ever it gets addressed to, to me it's a critical bug uh, i don't think they get much worse than that when functionality is lost um, but uh, i don't control what the access dev team does and we'll see we'll see what they do with it i don't even know if they'll ever address it we can keep our fingers crossed so uh, but for right now this is still what i consider to be the best route it's you load some type of framework file that just has the bare bones that calls the css or the J javascript uh, sets up the body things like that and then you can do the rest of your work through vba but if you try to do 100% of it through VBA, you're going to see it doesn't work. And we're going to stop there for today. I hope this has helped some of you see that you can push that first implementation even further, that you can do more with HTML menus than just a basic menu. Um, we can add security. We can add dynamic content via a table or any other means you want. Um, and it can all be done at runtime. So keep that in mind and um, keep keep uh, exploring, guys, because this is how you're going to manage to do things that are innovative and uh, take your solutions to where you want them to be. And it's just by trying things out and you'll get there. Um, that's how I achieve all of these things. I'm not more knowledgeable than any of you out there. I just uh, get an idea of being in my bonnet and I just keep plugging away at it until I figure certain things out. Some things take me, you know, <laughs> weeks and other things end up being very simple. And within an hour, I have a solution. So I hope this helps a few of you out there and we'll see you in the next one. Please, please, please like, share, subscribe, leave me comments, help me elevate this, you know, my videos and they get uh, picked up by the algorithm more, my YouTube's algorithm. And the only way for that to happen is by showing engagement in my videos. So the like, the shares, the subscribe, and especially comments. Thanks a lot, everyone, and have a great end of day.